Hi, everyone. My name is Stacy. I run CPAPbabes.com, raising awareness for sleep apnea and other sleep disorders. Um, I've been meaning to make this video for like years. Uh, if you are following me for sleep apnea and CPAP content, this video does not have a lot of it. <laughs> so um, it's about another health journey I have been on. So if you're only interested in sleep apnea stuff, maybe skip this one. However, it does tie in a little bit. So it might be really long. It's a really, really, really long story. But here I am. I'm going to try to make it today. I have about a half hour. It might take me a half hour. Anyway, so I have been struggling with my health for a very, 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 very long time. Um, ever since I was like pretty much 15, 14, 15, I remember starting to feel really sleepy. Um, I think that's probably due to uh, my sleep disorder. So I have sleep apnea, but I also have a sleep disorder called idiopathic hypersomnia. Look, Momo's yawning as I say that. Funny. Um, so however, idiopathic hypersomnia, it might, I might have narcolepsy. I've talked about that in other videos. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but beyond the sleepiness. So think of that as a separate potential thing. I have had some really odd symptoms for a very long time that I, that I've never been able to explain. And in the past two years, they've gotten like way worse, like really, really, really bad, really bad, bad enough so that I can't work. And I've always like worked and worked and worked and worked two jobs and whatever. Um, so that's been really tough. So I am going to start at the beginning with some of my weird symptoms and kind of tell you where I am now. So it's been a long two years. It's been the longest two years of my whole damn life. Anyway. So my symptoms that started when I was 15, the first one was um, really the, wor the first and the worst besides the sleepiness is I had hyperhidrosis when I was 15, which means excessive sweating. Honestly, it was horrifying. It was so incredibly embarrassing for me. And I was kind of shy back then. Funny because I'm not now. So I was kind of shy back then and really self-conscious. So the fact that I was like sweating profusely all the time was like really horrifying to me. So that was really tough. So eventually um, the doctor tried all these different things and put me on a uh, medication called Robinol, which kind of dried me up a little bit and it helped with the sweating. It wasn't perfect, but it was better. And then after a while, it kind of would get better and worse, depending on a couple of things. I know taking antidepressants can make your, you sweat more. So, but eventually I just started, stopped caring because I was older and I'm like, whatever, I just sweat a lot. So that was my first thing. And then, of course, I was always really tired and just didn't feel well. I think that's what's so hard to explain about this whole thing is, like, it's never, like, very specific. Like, I just felt sick a lot. Sick and anxious. and But, but the anxiety wasn't necessarily, like, worry. It was, like, body anxiety. It was the weirdest thing. So everyone's like, oh, you need to treat your anxiety. But it's, like, it wasn't worry anxiety or mental anxiety. It was, like, my body was like constantly in a state of physical anxiety. Very weird. So when I was in my 20s, my like early 20s, I remember I went to give blood. Um, and they're like, oh, you know, your heart rate's high. So we don't know if we can let you give blood. And I had remembered that a few doctor's appointments before that, the doctors would be like, oh, your heart rate's a little high. Are you nervous? I'm like, no. <laughs> and so then... It was just weird. It was every time I go to the doctor, oh, it's a little high. Did you rush here? Like, no. <laughs> so over and over again, I was having a slightly high heart rate, but it wasn't really interfering with anything. It was just like, it was weird every time I went to the doctor. Um, so that was another thing. Just random weird little symptoms. I can't even remember all of them, but I just have never felt well. I've just felt yuck a lot. And it's very cyclical sometimes. So I would feel like really bad for a while. And then I try something and then I feel better. I'm like, oh, well, obviously I took care of that. I figured that out. Now I'm fine. And then I feel yuck again, like in a couple months. So I, it was weird, but it was kind of pretty, I felt really bad, but it was also kind of subtle. Like it wasn't like bad enough. So I couldn't do anything. So always, sometimes I couldn't do stuff, but anyway, so, and then in 2015, I got diagnosed with sleep apnea. It was a little weird because sleep apnea, and I know I've talked about this a ton, sleep apnea is very like, and the reason why I do the work I do, some people will say, okay, 
you know, men who are bigger with thick necks have sleep apnea. And at that point, I was a much thinner young woman, young-ish woman. I was like 30. And everyone was like, so I was like, oh, that's weird. I wonder why I have sleep apnea. But I had sleep apnea. I treated it. I was still sleepy. And so later I found out I had idiopathic hypersomnia, which means you're sleepy and there's no reason. However, that could be narcolepsy because genetically I have narcolepsy markers and there's a whole other thing, but that's another video. So, um, so yeah, so I got diagnosed with sleep apnea. I'm like, oh my gosh, it makes sense. The body anxiety, that's because sleep apnea is giving me anxiety, depressed because of that. I, my heart rate's high because of that. My blood pressure's a little high because of that, because of sleep apnea. Once I treat the sleep apnea, it all get fixed. But that didn't happen. I did feel better once I treated my sleep apnea and I still do use CPAP every single night and I love CPAP, but I didn't feel like a lot of my symptoms just never went away and I thought it was so odd, but I was like, whatevs, I mean, what can you do with a high heart rate? Like, and it wasn't really affecting my life at that point. So anyway, so I just kind of felt like, I think the term I like to use is like malaise. Like I just felt sick a lot. I felt tired. I felt yuck. It's very, very technical term. Yuck. So anyway, um, 2017, I got pregnant with my son. Funny enough. Okay. I, before I had my son, I was pregnant. I had a pregnancy that I lost very early. Um, trigger warning, I guess it's actually not a big story, but, and I have processed it emotionally, but, um, yeah. So I had an early pregnancy lost around six weeks with that pregnancy. What was so weird is that my wrists hurt so bad during that whole pregnancy. I was only pregnant for like a week, but oh, it hurt. And I couldn't do anything. I was wearing wrist braces and my wrists were weak and it was terrible. It was so bad. And then when I lost that, that pregnancy, then my, it went away. I'm like, oh, that's weird. But then when I got pregnant with my son very soon after, who is alive and well and at preschool right now, um, the first symptom of pregnancy I had was a shooting pain up my arm. So that's weird. But, um, so yeah, so when I was pregnant, I felt pretty terrible, but I think that's normal. A lot of people just feel terrible when they're pregnant. Momo, can you not lick yourself while I'm doing this video? Sorry, but no, not there. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, so I felt pretty yuck when I was pregnant and pretty terrible. Then when I had my baby, I felt a lot better for like a couple weeks and then it went, started going downhill and it started going downhill quite a bit. Bit. So I was working. I was bringing my kid with me to work. I was so tired. I wasn't feeling well. I just felt just malaise all the time. And I just kind of pushed through for two years working, parenting, feeling terrible. I started Zywave, which is a narcolepsy drug. And I felt better for like a month and then I felt terrible again. And it was just like nonstop. And it was wor getting worse and worse and worse progressively after I had my son. But I couldn't I really determine what it was. It was weird. So then came march of 2020 what happened then does anyone know the pandemic right so the pandemic started and i stopped working for various reasons um, my husband's immunocompromised so i did not be around people so because i didn't want him to get COVID and die so um during that time i actually had about a month and i was okay so the pandemic happened. I was stuck at home with my kid. I was drinking this like adaptogen tea, like twice a day for a month. It was really good. And I started to feel really good, like better than I've ever felt. I'm like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Obviously working was very hard on me. So now that I'm not working, I'm, I'm great. Um, then I actually went back to work part-time for a little bit. And when I went back to work part-time, I started to feel crappy again. And I'm like, oh, it must be, it must be this or that. Or I don't know. I couldn't really figure out what it was. Um, so, but I kind of just blew it off, but then I started getting like sicker and sicker and sicker. And then I actually stopped working again and I still got sicker and sicker. And I'd be like, oh, it's this. And I tried to fix it. Nothing would happen. I tried supplements. I tried everything. I tried naturopaths, whatever. And I just felt terrible, but I kept trying to be like, no, I, I did this. I took this supplement and made it better. But my, my malaise was always like super cyclical, very weird. So. Then in the summer of 2020, we moved from Seattle to where I live now, which is on Whidbey Island, which is cool. And sorry, my husband is texting me. He says nothing important. So, um, I mean, my husband's important, but what he's saying isn't important. So, um, yeah, so I moved here 
then like October after I moved here, I moved here in the summer, October, I started to feel terrible, like worse and worse and worse, right? Obviously that's the theme, worse and worse. But then I started getting this like feeling that like my ovary was being stabbed with a toothpick. <laughs> it's like the weirdest feeling. It was like, Ch -ch -ch. and so I'm like, this is not normal. None of it's normal. I've been feeling really crappy, but maybe I should look into this. So, and I was just feeling like terrible, terrible, terrible. So I just started going to the doctors and I, I actually had an IUD. I thought maybe my IUD was poking me over my ovary, but it wasn't, but I got taken out anyway. And that began the two years, almost two years of pure hell trying to figure out what was wrong with me. Oh, it was like, it was bad. So anyway, so I saw a gynecologist. They're like, yeah, everything's fine. I saw, who's the first doctor I saw? I saw a general practitioner here. Oh, if you feel like you're dying, go to the ER. I went to the ER. They're like, oh, yeah, we don't know. We'll refer you to all these places. Um, I saw an infectious disease person who said, I, at that point, I had like cytomegal, at one point, I had cytomegalovirus, but then they test me again. They're like, oh, you're fine. I saw infectious disease doctor. I got tests done. I saw a, I think I saw a cardiologist, which they were like, yeah, your heart rate's kind of high. And they did like the Holter monitor. They did an echocardiogram. They did everything. Everything was fine. I saw a rheumatologist. She was like, yeah, you're fine. Actually, he, I didn't like him because he was like, he wouldn't even run any tests. And I was like, can you just run a test and make sure? Because it sounds, it feels autoimmune. I don't know. And he's like, yeah, no. And then I got really pissed and walked out. Then I had a regular doctor who actually did do some blood tests for, uh, what's, what I just say, rheumatology, like for autoimmune diseases. And those were all normal. I know a normal autoimmune panel doesn't necessarily mean you don't have an autoimmune disease, but it didn't really match up. So an endocrinologist, he tested me for Cushing's disease. He tested me for adrenal insufficiency. My, my symptoms really seemed to line up with adrenal insufficiency, which was weird. But then with Cushing's disease, I was like, oh, well, it's a very specific body type. And I didn't have that body type at that point. So I'm like, well, it can't be that. And there's a test for Cushing's disease that I screen, screen, took, I screened out, I passed, it was fine. So, and I, I saw two different endocrinologists because it really seemed endocrine related. So then I saw a neurologist. I don't know. I saw like every doctor. I've probably seen. Okay. So I saw the first rheumatologist. At some point, I saw another rheumatologist. I've seen, I believe I saw two cardiologists. I saw, I had, I've had three different primary doctors. I've seen, oh, then I, they said I had POTS, which is fine because I kind of do have some of the symptoms of POTS, but like none of the things that are supposed to help POTS help me. So I saw a special neurologist for that. I saw another POTS neurologist. So that's 10. Um, I tried different medications. I saw a naturopath Then the naturopath was fine, but she just like kept giving me supplements, which is fine, but they didn't help. I didn't feel any different and they were so expensive. And like, I like naturopaths, but I kind of wasn't thrilled with her because she was like, I feel like she kind of like blamed it on me. She like, oh, you're weak and shaky because you're not eating. I'm like, well, I'm so nauseous. I can't eat. It was just like, it was just a shit show. Excuse my language. Um, so yeah so finally i was kind of sick of seeing the naturopath i was seeing because she wasn't helping so i went to see another naturopath and this is you know i'm seeing all these other doctors in between i think maybe i have pots it doesn't really feel like pots intuitively i don't feel like i have pots none of the things that's supposed to help pots ever help me but it was weird so then i saw the new naturopath i saw she did a test called a I don't know. Oh, it's called the sleep profile test by ZRT. And it's like you pee on these things and they you dry them out and then they test different things. And that test showed that when I woke up in the morning, my cortisol was a little high. And then two hours later, like two hours after I woke up, my cortisol was like six times the high limit or three times or something crazy. It was very, very high. And then it went very low later. So it followed a normal circadian rhythm, but it was really high. It was like, I think yeah, it was too high. I think it was like the high was like 60 and mine was like 180 or something weird like that. So, um, so yeah, I did that. And then I went to the naturopath. I'm like, Hey, my cortisol is really high. That's not good. And she's like, yeah, take these supplements. And I was like, I just saw a naturopath and she just put me on all these supplements and they didn't help. So no. And then I decided not to see her anymore. Like she was trying to help, but like, I couldn't, 
I didn't want to spend all the money on supplements again when they clearly weren't helping. Something else had to be at play. So then I saw another endocrinologist. He was like, well, if you pass the dexamethasone impression, suppression test, you're fine. I'm like, well, I'm not fine, and it seems endocrine, and my cortisol is high, and whatever. He's like, well, it follows a normal circadian rhythm, so if it follows a nor- normal circadian rhythm, it's fine. I said, however, I am on a medication that makes me sleep deeper and better at night, so it forces me to be into a normal circadian rhythm. So my cortisol goes too high, but it follows a normal rhythm. But I'm like, I think that med that I'm on is forcing me into it. He's like, yeah, probably not. So yeah, I'm like, Ugh. and the other thing is the condition that's kind of related to high cortisol is Cushing's. And with Cushing's, you get very, very heavy and you gain weight, weight for no reason. And at that point, I wasn't gaining any weight. I was like, my weight was very, very steady. So that was weird. So so I saw like three or four different endocrinologists and they're all like, yep, yeah, normal circadian rhythm. You're fine. You passed this test. You're fine. You did this test. You're fine. I'm like, cool, cool. Thanks. Thanks everyone. So, um, because of the high cortisol though, I wasn't, I just wasn't convinced that it wasn't an issue. So I saw another, one of the endocrinologists, I said, I think this is forcing me into an, or this medication I'm on is forcing me into a normal circadian rhythm. And he's like, okay, well, you can get off it for two weeks and then see what happens. So I got off it for two weeks and I still wasn't feeling anything. So I decided, decided to stay off a little bit longer. And then he sent me for a 24 hour urine test to test my cortisol. And he's like, well, that's fine. So you're fine. So also in that time, before I saw like one of the endocrinologists, I started ordering my own cortisol test to show high cortisol. And I actually got some back that showed high cortisol. I did my own 24 hour urines. Some were high, some were normal. I did a blood test. It was high. So I wanted to come in with data and they're just like, yeah, you're fine. I'm like, cool. Thanks. So anyway, finally, I just did my doctor Googling and I found um, something called cyclical Cushing's. And it all kind of made sense because kind of the pattern I followed my whole life is I'll feel okay. And then I'll think I fix it. And then I feel good. then, Then I feel better. And then I don't and whatever. So I'm like, okay, that kind of fits. Also, as soon as I got off Zyrum, Zywave, they're kind of the same. I was on both uh, at different times, but I got off Zywave actually was what it was. My weight started to really increase and I gained like 50 pounds in three months, which isn't fun, but it is what it is. So I was like, okay, I'm starting to look like I have the Cushing's thing. I have the very round face with the chins, which is a Cushing's thing. So I looked up cyclical Cushing's. I found a Facebook group. Doctors hate this. They're like, oh, these patients looking at their Facebook groups, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well. (laughs) So, and then I learned that Cushing's disease can be caused by a tumor on your adrenals or a tumor on your pituitary gland. I had already had a CAT scan on my adrenals, but um, it didn't show anything. So I was like, well, I need to find someone to get me imaging of my stupid pituitary gland because like why haven't we looked at that yet why is no one helping me i hate you all (laughs) it was just like oh you know this is years and years of bs so i found a doctor who specializes in cyclical cushings he's 550 dollars an hour and it's not like we have money because i'm also not working because i'm so sick i'm working a little but not a lot i'm like okay i'm gonna see this dude so i saw him and he's like yeah this seems like it might be a thing Let's run some more tests and let's do an MRI. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love you. You're my favorite doctor in the world. I didn't say that. But I was very excited that he would order an MRI. And they did an MRI and they found a small tumor on my pituitary gland that probably secretes hormones and makes me feel like crap all day, every day for many years. Well, not every day, but a lot of days. (laughs) So that's what we figured out. And... Okay, so actually, he hasn't quite classified the tumor exactly, but he, but the, the report, the MRI report says, yes, this is suspicious of a pituitary tumor. And then he saw it and he emailed me. He's like, yep, looks like a tumor. Let's schedule an MRI read. So my MRI read is in 15 days, and then he'll be able to go more in depth about what he sees, and then maybe I get treatment. So I've said this a million times, <laughs> but I think I finally figured it out. And it has taken every single little piece out of me. There's been so many tears. Every doctor's like, you're a crazy depressed bitch, which is probably true. But I was like, oh, I'm not 
depressed. Be I'm not. How did I say it? I'm depressed because I'm sick. I'm not sick because I'm depressed. I was depressed because my illness was making me feel so crappy and no one would listen to me. And the doctors would just be like, oh, you're probably crazy. And I'd be like, but I'm not. I just, oh, uh, I'm just, uh. So I'm on the right path. And that, I mean, and that's honestly part of the reason I haven't posted on YouTube. I've been crap about keeping up my Instagram. I babe of the week on my blog. It's, it's fallen by the wayside. I hate it. I have, I haven't been like super flaky with a lot of stuff. Like I can, if I have a job, I do my job. I get it done. If I have accountability to other people, I can usually get it done. But my own stuff, I just, that's what I do in my downtime. And in my downtime, I'm so sick and I can't do anything. So I don't do it. I feel guilty. And then, but, but it's been the hardest thing. Like I can't, I do not have the words. I wish I could, I had the words to tell you. There's a song I listen to like every day now. I'm really into Billy Joel lately. I listened to a lot of Billy Joel growing up, but there's this Billy Joel song and he says, if I only had the words to tell you, if you only had the time to understand. And then he has another thing, another verse that goes, if I only had the words to tell you, if you only had the time, the time to comprehend. Sorry, you had to hear me sing. I know it's not good. But that's like, that song echoes my head. It's like, I, my experience has, and I know other people with chronic illnesses will get this, but my experience has just been indescribable. Like, I do not have the words to tell you how tough it's been and how it's taken, I mean, I'm going to cry. I, I'm hoping to get through this video without crying because I'm wearing mascara, but it's taken every ounce of perseverance and every ounce of everything that I have it's taken me researching. It's taken me, taken me arguing with doctors. It's taken me freaking out on doctors and then them thinking I'm crazy and then me feeling bad that I'm not being taken seriously. And then like, oh, I shouldn't freak out on doctors because then I look crazy, but maybe I am crazy to be told over and over and over again for, you know, since I was 15 and now I'm 38 that I'm just depressed and I'm just crazy and this is my fault and I'm being dramatic. That's been the hardest the hardest thing it's been the hardest thing ever it's been so hard like you know if you know you know <laughs> so to finally get hopefully an answer and it may be fixable I could get the tumor removed it's not always like a guarantee that it will I'll feel better but at least there's a chance it's, oh, it's just too much. <laughs> so what I've mentally the past, like, it's been about a month since I got my MRI. Mentally, the past month has been amazing because finally I have achieved something. Finally, I got a doctor to listen and to run the right tests. And finally, it's like, this is proof that I'm not making this up. I am not making this up. This is proof. I am not crazy. I am, but not because of that. I have achieved something. I have fought and 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 fought. And fought. While, I've, while I've been sick, I've fought with insurance companies. I've fought with doctors. I've persevered. I've like, it's just, I feel like some people get a master's degree. I get a diagnosis that I had to fight for, you know, like, and, you know, I started my friend the other day and I was like, yeah, I finally figured out what's wrong with me. And she's like, oh, let me read you this. Cover. I love her. It's nothing against her. It's just like, against the system of everything so i said hey i finally figured out what's wrong with me and it's you know it's a brain tumor and blah blah and i was just like and she says oh no so oh it's not cancerous but it messes with me and blah blah and she goes oh well that's crazy it took so long to figure out did you go to a new doctor i'm like well <laughs> this is uh, she's wonderful it's not against her it's just against like Normal people can go to the doctor and get it figured out. I'm like, well, I saw about 15 different doctors and five endocrinologists and none of them figured it out. I figured it out on my own from Googling. <laughs> anyway, so that's where I am right now. This is my very long video. Um, if you are think you might have like Cushing's disease or I don't, I, technically I'm not diagnosed with Cushing's disease, but 
It's likely. I have something wrong with me. I do have something wrong with me. I promise you. That's like physical that you can see on a very high resolution MRI. <laughs> so if it feel free to shoot me a message on here. Again, I'm not the best at responding. I know a lot of you have sent me messages and I've responded. I feel really bad about it, but um, hit me up on Instagram. That might work or just email me. You can just, you know, go to my website, cpatbabes.com, shoot me an email. Usually those get through because I can respond to those easier. Um, so if you need any support, you know, I can help you out. So now I don't want to make this into a career, but I am really hoping that in the future I can volunteer as a health advocate to help people through the same process that I have gone through of fighting, 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 fighting. I don't really want to make money off of it. I don't want to make money off of patients. Patients already spend enough money, but I do want to help people with it as like a side project because someone needs to do it. I don't know how I did it myself. It's, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. I've done lots of hard things. <laughs> so anyway, that's my story for now. I am, hopefully I'm going to stop this and then download it and then upload it or something like that. I don't know. And then put it on YouTube and yeah, comment if you want. I don't know if many people will watch it and I know I suck at editing. I don't edit. So I don't know if many people will watch it, but if you um, want to, I'm glad you did. Thank you. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. I'll keep you updated. Again, I've seriously been dreaming of making this video for so long, but I figured it out. Like since the two years ago, I'm like, oh, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do a video. And now it's almost two years later. I figured it out. Bye. Love you all. Thanks for watching.